What is up, all you stone cold, super fly, fish tank and fish loving funkadelics? You watch your aqua funk aquatics with me, aqua funk. And if this is your first time here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell, so that I can talk to you directly when it comes out fresh off the presses. Revolution will not be televised, not be televised. There'll be no rerun, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? And if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about what you're seeing today. So listen, I'm standing here in front of a very incredible uh, body of water, um, and I'm planning on doing this video in the future. That is why you need to hit that notification bell. It's basically going to be talking about um, three different... Um, environments that all come together as one so if you're into um, nature conservation if you're into aquarium fish uh, this is a, a nice mixture of mother nature meat and man and coming up with something beautiful and unfortunately it's not an educational thing it's more of a, a landscaping scenery type thing but I'm gonna turn it into educational and I think you're gonna appreciate it so like I said don't forget to hit the notification bell um, for this video but the reason why we're here today is to talk about this itty bitty little fish that I am just now coming um, aware of. I, I've had this fish, this, this species of fish for uh, a, a couple months now. Um, but this is the first time I'm actually spending a lot of attention to it. And I'm very happy I am. It's the um, pygmy sunfish. In doing my research for this fish, it's kind of difficult because I can't really find a whole, whole lot on them as far as people's experience with them. Um, and that's where I like to do my videos from that that um that aspect of people's real life experience. So I figure, you know what? Let me go ahead and tell you what I've learned about these guys and what I think about them and my my future plans for these guys. Um, I think you're gonna love it. This fish is really actually really cool. Um, I I find that some of the stuff that I've been reading does not apply, at least to these fish. But I haven't had them um, for as long as other people have. So. Uh, follow me on my journey while I talk about these dudes and how I'm doing it. All right, so what you're looking at is a 10-gallon tank with a DIY sponge filter. You see that green um, little elephant vase on the left. In the back towards the right, you see another bunch of bubbles going up. That's an extra added sponge filter that I felt was necessary. It's behind a clump of uh, java moss and driftwood. For the gravel um, substrate, I'm using a mixture of gravel and planted substrate I had it laying around so I figured why let it go to waste and I do have a small heater in it which you don't need for these guys uh, 75 78 degrees is, is just fine for them they they don't need that little heater it's just I keep my house cold so for the sake of watching them move a little move around a little bit more I added the heater all right so there's, there's, there's two types of pygmy sunfish or elisonoma huh? You like you like the, the, the wordage? You like how I got that down? Elisonoma. Usually I'm terrible with these um, Latin names, but uh, I can do Elisonoma. Um, at any rate, the, the pygmy sunfish, Elisonoma, there's two types. There's one found on the eastern side of Florida, which goes by the name of the Okefenokee <laughs> sunfish. <laughs> I don't know. This is Okefenokee. Come on. Y'all don't, if that don't make you smile, there's something wrong with you. Um, Okefenokee. <laughs> can't say it without smiling um, and then the other one is the go eye that is found on the Gulf Coast side of Florida that is known by the name of Gulf Coast pygmy you see how that works at any rate these two got these two fish look incredibly similar um, really the only ways you can tell the difference is there's a difference there's a different amount of rays in the anal fin and there's some about the pores somewhere on its body I'm not sure but the best way to tell on which type you have is where you get them from for instance if you get them from East Coast it's Okie Finoki <laughs> if you get them from the Gulf Coast it's the Gulf Coast so that's the two ways you can tell now in the picture that I'm showing you right now the two types that it looks like an obvious difference but if you look them up if you look them up that, that you see where the Okie Finoki can look like the other one and the other one can look like the other one so 
Um, really the best way to tell is where you get them from. The pygmy sunfish is an ambush hunter. It likes to hide behind um, plants, vegetation, any kind of obstruction and ambush any kind of small invertebrates coming by. So what I've been feeding them is live black worms. I can get it for a dollar and uh, what I like about the black worms is if I if I put enough in there they'll burrow into the substrate and they'll stay alive. I don't have to culture them or anything. So you know I don't really have to feed this tank but once a week um, and that's just to make sure that the black worms are, are being replenished with with the stir buys that I have sorry the Julie Corys I have in there they eat a lot of them so I, I actually put a lot in there making sure that they have plenty plenty to eat so they could keep breeding when they do decide to okay so I've done I've done some research I've seen people have um, some success with these guys um, having them in planted substrate um, the stuff that you buy from the store but um they come from the same places that I live at so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all natural with this biotope style where it's pretty much all free I found that in my old age <laughs> that I've become really cheap it's just I don't know what it is I just everything it, I just feel like an old cheapskate let me let me give you an example 23 year old phone two dollars and fifty cents for some juice i don't care i'm thirsty 43 year old phone two dollars and fifty cents you know you're cheap when you look at a price and it just makes you angry and confused all right so i noticed that the females that's what you're looking at right there they're kind of great um tannish brown the males are the black with the blue they they seem to be the most outgoing the males like to stay in one spot i guess that's what they consider their territory the females just roam around willingly they also like to spend a lot of time up in the floating plant um roots that i put in there i'm glad i did that it's so hot oh my goodness uh you you probably saw a uh you probably saw where I had like a big bunch of uh, um, of uh, moss, moss growing, um, and that that is is where I'm hoping that if they decide to lay eggs, they will do that. I saw it. Look right here. Uh, the, I, I I saw and I read where these guys will lay eggs on on stuff like that, and it takes about three days and they'll they'll hatch. So I actually, you know, check this out. I actually got this cram packed with java moss that I just saw somebody um, pulling out of their little pond that they had from from that little water system that I showed you earlier they were cleaning it up and they were just shoveling out huge huge clumps of you know java moss so they said I could have as much as I wanted. Of course, I could have took the whole Home Depot bucket, but I only took this much. And apparently, they're going to, you know, if they do decide to lay eggs, they're going to lay eggs on this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this stuff up with, on some driftwood and see what, I, see what I get, you know. So this is how I'm going to go about this, this colony right here. I'm going to get either a 55 or 220 longs and split them up. I got to have multiple territories so I can have multiple males breeding. Look at this female. The male invites the female in to spawn and then he chases her off. The important thing is, is I give them the males the territory and plenty of live food. As long as they, they are healthy and have territory, they will continue to spawn. They only live one to two years, so it's very important for me to not have any gaps in the colony. I got to keep the colony going at all times. All right, guys. Like I said, man, I, I'm I'm really excited at how things are going with these guys. I, I'm I'm anxious to see um, how things go. I, I need to move quickly because, like I said earlier, they don't have a long lifespan. So hopefully, you know, when I move again. Uh, I could get these guys set up the way I want it, and they 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 do something for me. Um, like always, guys, I'm out. But uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your fish. Check out this snail go. I've never seen a snail up close, to be honest with you. Like this, this is an apple snail. 
Um, I found him outdoors and I brought him indoors. Um, I think he's the coolest thing ever. I just wanted to show you guys, look. Go, snail, go! I'm not real big into naming my fish um, or snails, but I do believe I'm gonna have to name this snail Crazy Legs. I think Crazy Legs, I love you Crazy Legs. You're gooey and you have weird antennae, but I love you. I love you.